Good evening. My name is Emily Klonicki. I have the distinct pleasure of being part of two of the organizations who have come together to bring you a City of Rockford Poet Laureate. I am the chair of the board of directors of the Rockford Area Arts Council, and I am an assistant director at the Rockford Public Library. I'm very excited to be here tonight with the mayor and with Mary from the Rockford Area Arts Council to welcome you to the City of Rockford's very first Poet Laureate Award Ceremony. Thank you. I'd like to introduce to you the Executive Director of the Rockford Area Arts Council, Mary McNamara Bernston. Good evening. The Rockford Area Arts Council welcomes you to an evening celebrating the arts in Rockford. And in particular, we are celebrating the art of poetry. And thank you for joining us virtually this evening. We hope you will enjoy our program. We are showcasing just a handful of the wildly creative and talented artists and dedicated arts organizations in Rockford. The Arts Council exists to support, promote, and develop access to the arts for everyone. Tonight, we offer access to the art of poetry. We will be introduced to an active group of Rockford poets, and we will bestow our first ever City of Rockford Poet Laureate and City of Rockford Youth Poet Laureate Awards. Poetry holds a unique place in the art world. While other forms certainly reflect the world around them through the use of a paintbrush or a pencil, a piano or ballet shoes, poets describe the world around them, be it nature, social movements, love, politics, spirituality, using the impact of their words. Tonight we have the honor of hearing from our community's esteemed finalists for the inaugural City of Rockford Poet Laureate. We will hear directly from them how they interpret the world with their poetry. Before we introduce our finalists, our generous sponsor of the City of Rockford Poet Laureate, Dr. Zach, a pediatric, den pediatric, pediatric dentist and over 25 year Rockford resident, would like to share a few words about why he and his wife, Jackie, support the arts in Rockford. And then you can settle into your seats for a year in review of the individual artists and arts organizations that made Rockford's 2020 in the arts so memorable. Hi, I'm Dr. Zach, and I'm a pediatric dentist here in Rockford, Illinois. I've been practicing for over 25 years, right? Right. I like to support the Rockford Art Counseling because anything that has to do with kids is great, and especially during this time of COVID when they're cutting budgets back. The first things they usually get cut, especially when the schools are having difficulty, is the arts. So. I wanted to help support them to get us all through this. I think it's important for kids because art is a way of expressing oneself. And everything's an art. Dentistry is an, is an art in itself too, but it's also a, a, a branch of science. And anything that has to do with art can be expressed as from a youngest age will grow bigger and bigger and bigger and get better and better as time goes on. When you're confined in an area, the one thing that you cannot confine is your imagination. And art is a way of expressing your imagination putting it on paper, writing about it. These are things that will always survive through the worst of times and the best of times. And actually helps you get through it, gives you purpose. Art enriches the community because it gives the individual in the community a way of expressing themselves that everyone else can appreciate besides the person that's doing it. And makes them feel like he's contributing to the group as a whole. Well, I'd like to thank you for what you do in the community. And I think it's really beneficial for everyone, especially the kids like it and I like it too, right? Right. Oh, and congratulations to the Poet Laureate winner. Ah. Uh, Spark is from the Rockford Area Arts Council. It is our response to um, the COVID related complications to summer programming for kids. So SPARK stands for Significant Public Art Apprenticeships in Rockford. 
and it was conceived about four weeks ago and we saw the need in the community to involve kids who are typically really creative, really engaged kids in a way that was productive, um, creative, and giving back to the greater community. So this opportunity with Woman Space couldn't have come at a better time. I spoke with Elaine Hershenberger and was just, you know, I'm, I'm involved with the uh, Women's Suffrage Centennial Committee as well as the sculpture in particular. So I knew that this work was going on. And Elaine and I um, spent one day together, wrote, wrote up a, a proposal and came up with this idea that kids could get involved for three or four weeks and we could really contribute to something uh, impactful in that short period of time. My name is Caitlin Baylor and I am a dance artist. Um, in 2019, found our partnership with Severs and Dells um, to create Dance at the Dells, which is site-specific dance on their um, property and at their nature center. So with site-specific dance, our inspiration really comes from the architecture, either natural or man-made of a space, the use of a space looking at ways to either um, kind of play off of that or disrupt that or in some way respond to that with movement. The process has to be so much more in the moment because you are responding specifically to the space where you are creating. So the first step really is to go to the performance space and you may not have your audience yet, um, but you have to go there first and let the, spot, the space kind of influence you and change you before you really know what you'll be doing in that space. So Megan and I work together really well. Um, we are identical twins. Um, so we have kind of a long history of um, symbiosis and um, collaboration. Um, so I think it's really wonderful to be able to have that um, person to bounce ideas off of. My sister and I, sometimes when we go out into a natural space for site-specific dance, the very first thing we'll do is just um, sit in the space and journal and write down things about um, what we're hearing and what we're seeing and some of the sensory elements and then kind of think about how to start to bring that into the body and into movement that could eventually fill the space. So that's kind of what the process has been most recently with um, our site-specific work. It's, it's totally a vehicle for, you know, self-exploration self and healing. Um, and, you know, I think all types of art um, hit, hit people differently. Um, so, yes, I think it can be a great tool that can be used to bring the community together and just for internal work for people to do that work. I think um, this year, more than ever, people have a shared experience. And I think that, you know, people are going to be responding to art differently because of those shared experiences. Alma was a project that was really the, um, the vision of Jeremy Klonicky over at Frame and Mortar and um, Edaville. Um, so Edaville had created this amazing um, 80 foot mural on the wall, the, an exterior wall of Frame and Mortar. Um, and Jeremy was working on creating um, projection mapping to um, almost bring that mural to life. And so then we feel so fortunate that Jeremy reached out to us about adding a layer of movement on top of that. Um, so we became um, sub-collaborators in that project along with um, a large group of other artists. And, and that represents, I feel like, the spirit of the entire project, which was just um, extremely collaborative and um, supportive. As the pandemic continues to sort of disrupt our normal way of doing things, you have to have a new way of life and you have to have a different um, response in certain situations. So I think creativity is going to be the first step for everybody in finding what those like new responses and new ways of being are. Um, so I think that like art, art has that unique power to do that.
My name is Victor Rivera. Uh, most people know me as Vic Monster. That's been my, uh, I guess you could say my performance name for the better part of 20 years. Uh, I'm uh, really heavily involved in like uh, the hip hop community. I'm a b-boy, break dancer, uh, DJ, and just uh, all around like art enthusiast. I've always been uh, into music like most people are, but only difference with me is I took it a step ahead and started interpret interpreting it physically. Um, and that's kind of where my journey became, uh, began with dancing. It was basically a physical interpretation of sounds. So in 2019, I was a part of two pretty big art shows that were very heavily uh, Latino influenced. One was Dia de los Muertos, which was in November, and one was uh, called We Got Latin Soul, which was in September, uh, which right now would be uh, Hispanic Heritage Month. So I probably would have had a show around this time of year, but just with everything going on, the restrictions, I decided not to. The art shows that we do usually generate, uh, attract a lot of people. And we usually have music and we'll have like, you know, uh, drinks and things of that nature. But our influence is really just our own culture uh, or our cultures. Um, and we're just trying to uh, share that with the rest of the Rockford community. I think the main challenge is just staying creative. Um, you know, a lot of people deal with the quarantine or just staying at home a lot differently. Um, me personally, I'm someone who gets inspiration from being out and about, from being around other creative people, from being uh, uh, around other creative shows and things of that nature. And hopefully next year we can get back to those things and be a little bit more quote unquote normal. But I think right now uh, the people who have been a part of our shows and want to be a part of our shows are, are, are motivated because they want to they want to showcase. And again, they know the type of uh, community community response we get and the type of outcome we get, which is, you know, good for for selling. And it's also good for uh, just creating your uh, uh, awareness to other people. I really do believe that the next coming years, be it 2021 or 2022, uh, people that had to put their ideas on, on weight are going to really uh, fulfill those and, and uh, fulfill them times two. All of our programs are about how we can help individuals and their families. And so to try and do that, we really had to shift our thinking. How do we connect with them when we can't connect in person? Um, one of the hard things for me was that we had to cancel all of our programs. And we know how important that is for individuals to have those outings, that social opportunity, that connection. But our art program, we thought, this is a place. This is where we can pivot. And so um, we were able to repurpose a grant and then apply for another grant. And we started a Monday art program. And so on Friday afternoon, we would announce what the art project was gonna be on Monday. And then individuals could either call and stop in and pick up art kits or we would deliver them to their home and they would get everything that they would need for that project on Monday. And then all they had to do was tune in live on Facebook at one o'clock and um, we would walk them through a, a 40 minute hour long art project and um, spend that time with them. And what I really appreciated with it is getting to see everybody's art that they've done because we had people involved in the program who wouldn't have normally done art before. So we, we had art classes that we partnered with the Rockford Park District, Therapeutic Art Rec, and we did like, um, skills classes and artist studies and those all had to stop. Um, those classes we would have 
around 20 individuals in each class. So in a week, we'd have about 80 people here, which was really hard to have that walk away um, during COVID. But this really gave us this opportunity for those artists to do it if they wanted to, but it also connected us with this group of artists that we didn't know was out there. I think what we've realized with COVID is that it's forced us to be more creative. We were closed from the middle of March. Um, museum staff came back to work at the beginning of June, but we were still closed to the public and we were able to socially distance, but still work together. And then we officially opened our doors back July 6th, but we had to cancel many fundraisers. We did keep our Ardex fundraiser going uh, July 17th. That was our first attempt to really try a virtual event. Um, we were still able to raise about $15,000 for the museum, but that was a big cut in what we were expecting. Um, Greenwich Village Art Fair, we usually have 8,000 people attend that in a weekend, so we decided we had to also take that, um, that event virtually as well. That was a huge loss for us um, uh, because that is our biggest fundraiser of the year. So not having, you know, and not only is it a monetary loss, it's a loss of connection that we have with our community, which we struggle with daily. Um, so when we were op able to open our doors back, um, we decided uh, as kind of an attempt to bring our community together, we realized that so many people are dealing with hardships that we decided to make the museum free till the end of the year. We did have a lot of people kind of saying, oh, maybe you just should cancel the event, postpone it till next year. But it was really important for us because we already had sponsors that had given money to this uh, that we talked to and they said, hey, if you want to do this event virtually, go for it. And it was me and a board member and uh, a, a committee member for Ardex. And we all socially distanced and we all did it live. And it was again, very hard because there's no script. So once we tackled Ardex and we were able to figure out how we're gonna do a virtual event, we felt more confident going into Greenwich Village Art Fair and another way for us to promote artists. Because we realized too, that throughout this entire pandemic, not only are we struggling, but artists are struggling. They're having shows canceled. They're not able to show in galleries. So when we took Greenwich Village Art Fair, which is normally in our parking lot, we usually have 100 artists in booths. We have live music. We have a point bar, which people can have a beer, walk around and shop. It's really fun. We had to kind of swallow the fact that we were not gonna have that event this year but we still wanted to do something. It was our 72nd Greenwich Village Art Fair. We didn't want to have that blip in history where we just canceled it. Um, we had 25,000 hits on that website in two days. In the two days we would normally have Greenwich Village Art Fair. Our artists made money. We were able to do videos on Facebook and, and Instagram so that we could still do artist studio visits. We could still, we had uh, some music, some live music that we were streaming that weekend too. So we just had to figure out how to make it work for us. It was not obviously what we wanted to do. And so it made us feel better that people were still craving that interaction and craving that interaction with artists as well. And it was a great way for us to promote artists that weekend. That's why I encourage so many people just to go down to a museum, come in, check it out. It's not gonna cost you anything, but you may look at the world in a totally different way. And you may start to notice things in your world because you're, you're getting art into your life. You may start looking at things in a different way. And it brings positivity. I think, you know, it's just, if I didn't have this creative space to come to every day, I don't know what I'd do.
talking to our artist. We have Milad Mozari. He was just about to open his show with us. A lot of time went into it. Um, a Rockford Area Arts Council grant went into it to pay for so many aspects of the exhibition. Um, and it just stopped. So no classes, no exhibition. But we still had energy. We still like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna make something happen online. We're gonna make something. And I think a reality really hit for us, for a lot of people where those, that personal energy was kind of drained too. And we were, you know, kind of um, lost with everybody else, trying to figure things out uh, for, for ourselves, for our family, and for new genres. Uh, so we're, we're very happy that uh, this, this, this might be a, a peek into the light to come here. The secret to meaningful relationships with new media, new technology, videos, installations, is that human connection, right? And one was with the United Way. And this was brought on by the Rockford Area Arts Council. Uh, and uh, Mary uh, was the kind of spearhead of bringing us together. And that kind of made us emerge from this, this what do we do next into we need to make this happen, right? We need to, to take the reins of this, make sure it's safe, make sure we're following guidelines and still serve communities in the way that we want to serve. So that United Way collaboration uh, took place through a seven week program in which we went as new genres, us and our uh, art instructors, went to a strong neighborhood house. And that's where we set up shop. Students in the neighborhood didn't have to leave the neighborhood, right? They could walk down to the strong neighborhood house. They could participate in being 3D scanned and being printed. They could participate in making sound walks, right? They could participate in animating there in the safe environment in their neighborhood. And that kind of resourcefulness, I feel from United Way, Rockford Area, Area Arts Council, and new, new Genres, I think really holds the heart of how do you reinvent yourselves and depend on each other to make something that's maybe even more meaningful than what we had before the pandemic. This is where Iga, uh, Puaska, my, my wife and co-founder, um, comes in, she has this incredible ability to understand the process of making art. And specifically for her, the process of creating animation. But she, uh, she got her second master's um, in, in, in education, right? Where she wrote her thesis about the, ther the therapeutic um, qualities of animating, right? So when she was an animator, it wasn't enough to animate about a subject. You know, what she found was that process of animating was sometimes the content, right? So, you know, when you're asking, like, how does art get you through? How does art change the place that we're in or help us deal, right? Those therapeutic qualities of maybe animating frame per frame per frame, that nice repetition, that thinking about a storyline, that self-representation, right? And I think that ties into that vulnerability, right? And being self-aware, that kind of lifts you out of reality for a second, especially for those young artists, right? It suspends them outside of real world for just a moment where like wonder is the top priority. And I think that relief is better than escapism, right? It's real world excitement. And I think that is how art kind of elevates us up and out of these places. Thank you to the artists and organizations involved in this year in review video. You enrich and elevate our community through your creativity and innovation. The Rockford Area Arts Awards applications for celebrating 2020 will be available on January 1st, 2021, and will be open through March 15th, 2021. The Rockford Area Arts Awards categories for 2020 are as follows. Lifetime Achievement, City of Rockford Distinguished Artist of the Year, Young Arts Ambassador, Visual Artist of the Year, 
Performing Artist of the Year, New Media Artist, Artist of the Year, Public Art of the Year, Film of the Year, Innovation in the Arts Award, Arts Educator of the Year, Excellence in Service to the Arts Award, and Placemaking and or Spacemaking. To receive the most current news about the Rockford Area Arts Awards, please keep your eye on the Arts Council's website and social media outlets for announcements and updates. Thank you for celebrating the arts with us this evening with a special focus on the art of poetry. Here to virtually share her thoughts and reflections on the, significant, on the significance of Rockford's inaugural Poet Laureate Award is Lynn Stainbrook, Executive Director of the Rockford Public Library. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Mary. It's so hopeful to see the arts community continue to thrive during this pandemic. Thank you for sharing that. And good evening. I'm Lynn Stainbrook, Executive Director of the Rockford Public Library. And on behalf of the library, I would like to welcome everyone to the J.R. Sullivan Theater at RPL's Nordloff Center. It's our pleasure to host this celebration of literary arts here at our library's Performing Arts Center. This project has been a very long time coming. In a world of 750 cable television stations, Super Mario Kart and TikTok, poetry may seem the uh, wallflower of artistic genres, but I submit that it is in fact right now, amid the chaos of today's complicated, battle-scarred reality, this is where the power of poetry can best serve our city. Today, as we face a pandemic, economic and unemployment crises, political divisions and social injustice, poetry speaks to us. Today, as we find our community immersed in fear, uncertainty, pain, and anger, poetry lifts our spirit. Actions matter, but words lead. Words unite. Words rip the veils away and display our ignorance. Words help us confront injustice, and words can help us heal. So on behalf of the library, I want to use my words tonight to congratulate all of our nominees. I can assure you the process of choosing a single poet laureate and youth poet laureate was challenging. I was honored to be afforded the opportunity to read each of your submissions and watch your interviews. Your work truly elevates and inspires as thoughtful, good poetry will. These gifted local artists, poets who themselves experience all that our city is facing today, use our common and sometimes uncommon language as their medium in the creation of an art form that exemplifies our shared experience. We look forward to promoting the work of Rockford's Poet Laureate and Youth Poet Laureate. We appreciate the opportunity to work alongside these poets to raise the community's consciousness to a greater appreciation of exploring poetry. We're eager to help people in our community discover how thoughtfully crafted language can inspire and heal, can educate and confront. And we can't wait to share poetry that celebrates Rockford's perseverance, Rockford's growth, and Rockford's ultimate triumph from all we're facing today. Congratulations to all our nominees. It's my pleasure to welcome our next speaker, a man who needs very little introduction. Mayor Tom McNamara was sworn in as the 41st mayor of Rockford on May 1st, 2017. Prior to becoming mayor, Tom served the community's third ward as an alderman from 2013 to 2017. He represented constituents on Rockford's east and west sides, as well as downtown and the main library. I first met Tom when he was active in creating and stocking the little libraries around Rockford. 
He won my vote and my admiration immediately. As mayor, he's focused on developing and implementing plans to reduce crime, increase police technology and training, strengthen neighborhoods and schools, support our public schools, and encourage economic development. And of course, to create a poet laureate position. Tom was born and raised in Rockford and is a graduate of Rockford's Boylan Catholic High School. He earned a Bachelor of Science in Sociology and Criminology degree and a Master's degree in Nonprofit Administration, both degrees from John Carroll University in Cleveland. He lives in Rockford's Third Ward with his wife Sarah and two children. Please welcome Mayor Tom McNamara. I got to say, uh, May of 2017, after this year, only feels about, uh, instead of three or three and a half years, only feels about 30 years ago. Um, but this is really an honor to be with all of you today. I want to first thank Lynn and Emily for your leadership of our public library and everything that you and your teams do to re-evolve our library during these difficult times. I also want to thank Mary McNamara Bernstein for her guidance of Rockford Area Arts Council. Before I get into uh, the information for this evening, what an awesome video we just had the opportunity to see. I, I think that is the beauty and the strength of the city of Rockford is uh, they spoke a lot. Uh, each one of the directors and organizers spoke a lot about the service they were providing to youth or to other artists. But think about the ingenuity, the creativity, the resolve that each one of those program directors, uh, directors of organizations, and executive directors and staff had to put forward to bring the arts to our young people and to all Rockfordians during COVID-19. What an awesome video, so thank you for that. So, it was about a year ago that we began having discussions with our friends at both organizations, the Rockford Public Library and the Rockford Area Arts Council, about establishing a poet laureate in our community. All of us understood the importance of literacy and literature in our society. They, they can help, literature and literacy can help bind us together and make us a stronger community. We also know the absolute vital role that the Arts Council and the library play in making Rockford a stronger community. This partnership among three organizations is strong and has brought about a new and exciting program. I'm excited that we're not only establishing a poet laureate, but we're also establishing a youth poet laureate as well. We need the voices of our experienced, and the voices of our young people. What a better combination than for this program to have both. I am certain that both our first poet laureate and our first youth poet laureate will play an important role in our community in the coming weeks, months, and years to come. The Arts Council and the Rockford Public Library are developing programming, complementary resources to provide the recipients with opportunities to promote their own personal work, host workshops for residents, and appear at important city gatherings, if we can do that sometime soon in the future. Before we learn the name of our first Youth Poet Laureate, I want to thank the Poet Laureate Committee that had the difficult task, an incredibly difficult task, of choosing from a, among a very talented group of nominees for both our laureate positions. Those members included Lynn Stainbrook of Rockford Public Library, which we just saw, Mary McNamara Bernstein from Rockford Area Arts Council, who is with us tonight, Teresa Gilbert from Rock Valley Community College, Emily Klonicky from Rockford Public Library, as well as a board member of the Rockford Area Arts Council, William Gahan of Rockford University, Anthony Turner, who I know as Tony Turner from United Way Strawn House, and Susan Porterfield, a poet advisor at large. So the city of Rockford recognizes the importance of our youth and the story of our future. Our first award this evening will be for the Youth Poet Laureate, a position that will be vital to inspire future young leaders. We had excellent nominations for, poet, for Youth Poet Laureate position and are pleased to see the talent is so deep in our community among our young writers. One, though, rose to the top and became the clear leader. So with that, I would like to show a brief video. 
The half-staff American flags fly, for those lost, too young to die. Names immortalized by our rising cry, as our calls for change carry high. Alpine Dam needs repairs. No more tagging, it hides the tears. The creations made by the light of flares hid the damage the dam now bears. COVID-19 has turned our lives into chores. Masks are required to access stores. The future we had planned now has closed doors. We change our habits for our health and yours. Building our city up, board by board. We change and adapt however we can afford. Even when there is seemingly no reward, we're building a new, strong Rockford. I've lived in Rockford for the past 12 years. I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, um, but we moved here 12 years ago, obviously. And I've been a part of different writing organizations throughout the city. Um, I've participated in Rockford Area Arts Council's projects, Rockford Public Library's projects. Um, I have a very Rockford-based life. Um, I personally really enjoy writing very Rockford pieces or very like pieces that are close to my heart or something that I can relate to very easily. So being here for so long and seeing the city change over time has made me more of a Rockford poet at times, sometimes more of a natural poet writing about parks, but in general I find that being here in Rockford has influenced my poetry and writing by just providing a safe space for me to create. I joined the Rockford Writers Guild when I was very young. I'm not sure how old I was. Um, I've been writing poetry since I was very, very young. So I think probably even before I was five, I was like starting to understand it. So it's been a very long time. And <laughs> I've always been interested in it and I've preferred writing poetry. Poetry's influence on me is I've become a better communicator throughout my life. Um, I feel like it makes it easier for me to speak in front of people because I'm used to presenting and sharing my poetry with others. It's made me more literate, more, it's easier for me to understand complex concepts. My inspiration comes from the world around me, uh, whether I'm in Rockford, Chicago, traveling somewhere else in between, or even farther away. The personal experiences I have, friendships, relationships, pretty much everything that happens around me sometimes the news. It just depends on what is the most prominent figure in my life at the time. So I chose the theme unrest and that's partially because of the political climate right now and everything is changing so much. And there's like the Black Lives Matter protests, there's rallies, riots, which aren't necessarily what we want, but that's something that's happening. Uh, there's still continued police brutality and shootings and killings in different parts of the country and even in the world. And so my original idea was a continuation of unrest as a way to keep fighting for progress and change in our city, in our nation, in our country, everywhere. So I just wanted to inspire other young people and really people of any age and gender, however they identify, to keep fighting for what they believe in and to make sure that they have a cause that they really think is worth fighting for. I think that the Youth Poet Laureate's role in influencing that conversation would be to share poetry that is political from myself and even from others in the city or country and speak about political issues that are important to me and why they're important and I don't want to necessarily say that people's opinions are wrong and you know shoot them down but share my own opinions and voice why I think that they're correct from my point of view inspire them to find their own voice and way to promote themselves. I think having a stable base here in Rockford will really influence me because I will be able to find somewhere where I can fit in and where I find people who are supportive and the city who's, the city itself is supportive of me. And because I've already had such a great experience here in Rockford that I'll be able to notice it elsewhere. I really hope for this position. I'm very honored to be nominated for it. And I hope to spread peace and positivity and different political ideals throughout the city of Rockford and not necessarily shine a light on every single thing, but highlight the aspects of Rockford that are important to me and that I think other people would find important. So thank you. Uh, what a wonderful video of an amazing young woman, Jocelyn Kuntz, uh, takes inspiration for her poetry from the world around her. Growing up uh, in Rockford, Jocelyn speaks of how her experiences here have shaped her and her writing. 
She is an energetic and phenomenally talented young woman, active in the arts in Rockford and throughout the Midwest. Her literary work has been published in the Rockford Review, and she has performed readings of her poetry at City Hall, Rockford Rotary Club, Severson Dells, Rockford Area Arts Council, and the Nicholas Conservatory, among others. Jocelyn has won multiple awards from the Rockford Writers Guild on which she has been an active member and contributor. She also plays piano and is active in dance, martial arts, and boxing. Civically engaged, Jocelyn regularly attends the city council meetings and participates in local protests, marches, and parades, such as the March for the Arts that took place in 2016. Jocelyn wishes to be selected as the first, uh, wishes to be selected as the first City of Rockford Youth Poet Laureate so that she can explore the theme, unrest. She hopes to use her role as Youth Poet Laureate to start important conversation and bring new ideas to the community. And absolutely, we know those are needed. It is on these and so many other merits that I, Thomas McNamara, Mayor of the City of Rockford, have the honor to name Jocelyn Coons, the inaugural City of Rockford Youth Poet Laureate. If you'd please join us. Jocelyn, would you please say a few words and read some poetry for us? Thank you. I am incredibly honored to be receiving this um, wonderful award tonight. I really hope that I can serve the city well and spread a message of both unity and the continuation of unrest that I spoke about, in, as you saw in the video. Um, I am really just excited to work with the Adult Poet Laureate and citizens of Rockford however I can. I'm really thankful towards the Rockford Area Arts Council, the Rockford Writers Guild, Rockford Public Library, the City of Rockford, United Way, Rock Valley College, Rockford University, and Rockford Public Schools for creating this, this wonderful role in the community. Um, I am just Thankful to my family. They have supported me through every step of this process and I share this award with them. Um, the city of Rockford, it means so much to me. I've grown up here for most of my life. I know it pretty well. I rollerblade around, I bike around, I walk around, I drive around, I get around the city of Rockford and I see it and I see its people. And even the people who I don't know, I still have a relationship with. The people I'll pass on the bike path every day and get a nod of approval or a wave of recognition these are the people I write poetry for. I write to share my experience with them, my experience with the community, my experience with the city, my experience with nature in the community, and just to share the city of Rockford and my life in it with everyone around me. Poetry in this time, it can be both political, it can be neutral, it can be personal, private, internal, whatever you want it to be. Whatever it is, is how you interpret it. You may interpret it something that is deeply personal for somebody else as a very political piece. And I hope to write poetry and share poetry with the community and the city of Rockford that is both personal and political. I am truly, truly honored to receive this and I hope to serve the city well. Thank you. I have a very short poem that I actually wrote about tonight. Um, it's very, very short, I'm just keeping it brief. What a day and what a night. I share this stage with all who write, each with potential that they share, with eloquent, eloquent words that show they care. To the panel, I am thankful for your choice. To the citizens of Rockford, I am honored to share your voice. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Our city is full of talented and passionate individuals. We received excellent nominations for our Poet Laureate position. Tonight, I want to honor all three poets who are with us tonight and recognize them for their achievement in being selected as finalists in this important position. When I become fused, settled into your wordplay, the most beautiful thing serenade my soul. I felt like an innocent child gleefully discovering the certainties of living carefree. Automatically, I want to cuddle in your grammatical chemistry and let it comfort, caress, consume, and console me. I want to lay next to your devastating diction and let it be softly on my neck and whisper sweet things and smile about it in my dreams. I want to smile when I hear your spoken word harmony charming me and disarming the strength I possess and let each and every word baptize my being and can cleanse my soul like water. Because your words are wind soft aloft the clouds, sweet genuine amidst the sunshine, clever daffodils that cast spells at will. And through them I see the science of hieroglyphics, discover all ancient mysteries, learn of all things important and intricate. Make love to my mind, you word warrior, your syllable soldier, lyrical enforcer. Transform me with traditional griotic telepathy. Feed me the vital venomous vocabulary that I need to proceed. I've had an amazing experience growing up, growing up in Rockford. I just wrote a book entitled uh, "Born and Ra I Was Born and Raised in the Rock. So it, it covers pretty much everything that I've experienced growing, growing up here. So um, I've made a, a lot, a ton of friends here. And every piece of my life, and besides family, involves friendship. So I've made some very long time connections that have helped me smile, helped me stay invested, invo involved in the community, and be an, an active collaborator and creative artist. It would be my attending Haskell Elementary School, where I first found myself involved in around young poets who were doing the same thing I was, but we were emulating rappers like LL Cool J, Salt and Pepper, Rock, Eric B and Rock Kim. If I was the poet laureate bringing a social justice theme to the position, it would be a, a huge conversation for this community because I believe that's what poetry oftentimes is. It's a conversation, of course, myself. If I'm standing in front of a microphone, I have a piece of paper sitting here. It's a piece, but it can turn into a conversation. So the young people protesting downtown has been a huge uh, inspiration. Just seeing them fight hard, fight for their lives, fight for a piece of equity in this community, it's, it's very inspiring. So. What I, what I try to do is make sure that I'm writing poetry that captures the moment, that tackles the moment. And if I can say anything that brings attention to what's going on, especially in their regard, then yeah, I, I make it happen. I get right to it. I try not to hesitate because those kinds of words are needed right now. You know, I'm already doing it now. I'm writing poems that are creating conversations about what's going on, not only in Rockford, but in this world. So I would like to have a broader conversation with the community, with social justice as a theme. That moment just before dawn, when the moon grows dim and mottled as a vaccination mark on the arm of a blue-gray sky, and I am having a dream of sipping tea with a bunch of bohemian poets in a bookstore I'd like to think was on the left bank, but more likely in some seedy town. The dream has a cozy feel. A man with a pipe says, it's National Poetry Month. Forgive the cliche. And then I woke up. And then I woke up, nuzzling the miraculous pillow longer, wondering why I should get up at all, what numbers will tally today like a sports scoreboard strobing in a game too close to call, a Hail Mary in the making. And then I woke up, worried what rules would change today, how everything we have done may not have been enough. Nonetheless, I say good morning to my husband, wrapped in covers like a mummy. Good morning to the cat, lounging like a queen on the sofa. Nevertheless, the coffee smells good, even if it makes me nervous these days. These days, when National Poetry Month is a luxury, I will indulge. Try writing a poem a day. Do what we all do. 
figure out how to get through this spring day, the promise of better times, the shaft of sun gliding through the ancient locusts at daybreak. I was born in Rockford and for the most part raised in Rockford. Um, I went to Guilford High School and graduated in 1967. I did go to college in Wisconsin but came back to Rockford because I had a, a job waiting for me. Well, I think my career as a poet um, and my teaching allowed me to get the Mayor's Art Award, the, the uh, Lawrence Gloyd Award for Community Impact. I'm not sure that what I wrote is a theme, but what I wrote was uplifting Rockford. Uplifting through collaboration, uplifting through working with, I think I you know, could expand, for example, on the, with the places that I've worked with and find new places to work. Just the idea that someone is singing the praises of Rockford. I've heard of other, I know a number of poet laureates. I know the Poet Laureate of Wisconsin. I knew very well the, the former Poet Laureate of Illinois. We don't have one now, by the way. And they do things that are pretty interesting. I've heard of things like poetry on the bus, you know, where, you know, above the seats, there's places for ads. That would be something, you know, something uplifting, a picture or something uplifting. I've really published all over and I have a name. If you were to, you know, look me up on the internet, it, it kind of surprises me what's out there. Um, I've won a lot of contests, um, a, a lot of awards, you know, scholarships and that kind of thing, which doesn't necessarily make a poet laureate, but is part of the process of becoming excellent in your field and becoming, having a breath, a breath of knowledge. I think I have a long involved history that actually involves the skill set that I think would make an uplifting and maybe even charming poet laureate. Yeah. Come for me in darkness like all cowards. Come for me when I am starved and deprived of comfort. Come for me when I am crazed for want of a woman's lips. Come for me when my days have outlasted the portion in my beggar's bowl. Come for me when I have watched the mongrel suffer in the ditch. Come for me on Lorca's birthday, on Akhmatova's wedding night, or Bastille Day. Come for me in my darkness, and I will show you how I write poetry. Well, I grew up in Byron. I was born at Swedish American Hospital. I live about two blocks away from Swedish American Hospital. And aside from going to high school in Byron, I've lived here all of my adult life. When I moved here, we weren't experiencing the revitalization that we are now. It was a little dark. You know, Money Magazine would say things like 300th worst city in America and all of that was going on. So a lot of people were, you know, beat down and depressed. And, uh, but our arts community, I think, really responded to that, started responding to that at that time. Even before all of what we see happening downtown, the artists were there. We were there. We were saying, hey, Rockford is great. We, we like this place and we want to we wanna see a comeback here. A great deal of poetry is about uh, empathy. It's about, and it's about observance. You have to connect with something that someone else feels. So you always have to be listening, you always have to be watching and um, seeing the world from other people's perspective. In my publications online, I edit um, an online literary review called Outsider Poetry. The uh, editorial um, slant there is that we publish um, outsider poetry is poetry created by people who are disabled or have no formal education. We're able to reach out to a, a very large and uh, inclusive um, swath of our, our, our literary community. So I'm in touch with those people. I know who they are. I work with them. I collaborate with them. They will be, they would be key for me in making sure I know wh where we need to be. And uh, I would really be trusting, I'll, trusting them a lot in making decisions on what we need to do. If I were the Poet Laureate, I would love to meet the other poets of the community and, and start a team because I believe team is always better than individual. I don't think of this as an individual position. I think of it as an opportunity to build coalitions, collaborations, and to work with as many people as I can. And I would like to gain the experience of knowing more about the city. There was a street we were walking uh, with a friend. We were at the embassy. We went up to on the, on the top, on the rooftop there, and we walked, and I realized I haven't been on this street. I've been in Rockford, you know, all my adult life, and I've never been on this particular street. 
There are places I've never been. There are all these people I've never met. And what I'd like to gain from this is those experiences. Um, I really want to know how they feel, how they're dealing with life, the ch their challenges. What do, they, what do they want? How do they use? How do they? What is their creative process? Yeah, that's what I'd like. So you can uh, certainly see that there is a tremendous competition uh, for the poet laureate position. We have very high hopes for both the youth poet laureate and the poet laureate positions. There's a, and there's a reason for that. This is an important time in our community. We're listening to the voices of those who have not been listened to in the past. We're having difficult conversations about the history of our community and equally as important, what new chapters we all want to write together in the future of our great city. And we're working to take action on issues that should have been addressed long ago. We're placing a lot of responsibility on the shoulders of our first poet laureate as we expect this person to provide perspective on events and initiatives in our community. And we expect our youth poet laureate to do the same to help elevate the arts, to advance literacy and the literary arts. And I hope to bring unity to our community in times that it sometimes feel easier to be split apart. It is now my honor to present the first poet laureate of the city of Rockford. I was born in Rockford and for the most part raised in Rockford. Um, I went to Guilford High School and graduated in 1967. I did go to college in Wisconsin, but came back to Rockford because I had a, a job waiting for me. And even though I was the first literary editor, there really wasn't any talk of women in those days becoming writers. You, you were going to be a teacher, a nurse, or a secretary. So um, I became a teacher. It was the closest thing I could get to literature. And I became the creative writing teacher at East High School. And it was like my niche. I really loved doing it. but then. It, as it lasted. It didn't last forever because the system changed. But um, I started doing the assignments I was giving my students and I had a burning desire to write um, even back then. Uh, and so I started writing, you know, if I assigned them a, a sonnet to write, for example, I thought, well, what, what am I making them do? <laughs> you know? And so I would do it myself and I loved it. I loved doing the work and I started submitting the work to um, English Journal, National Council of Teachers of English, and they were picking up my work left and right. It was like, that's all there was to that. And they even used one of my sonnets as um, a promotional postcard for the National Council of English Teachers. And so I think in a way, I've always had this tandem life of teaching, mentoring, writing. You know, it's always been in tandem. One sort of feeds the other. So. Once I realized that I could write and that I could get noticed, which really blew my mind, I started being more, um, oh, perse I persevered more with writing and I sought out writers in Rockford. And one of the people that, uh, this actually really happened and it was really part of my writing process, um, the late, great Frank Shear of Rock River Times literally knocked on my door unannounced and said, the Rockford Area Arts Council said, you were the poet in Rockford. I wanted to meet you. And that started a long, involved, and wonderful friendship in which um, he, more than I, but I was in on it, created the Rockford Writers Theater, which is actually, they gave me a grant, which helped fund my first book. It was not self-published, but it sweetened the deal. And then he offered me a position as a, a poetry columnist for Rock River Times, which I did for many, 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 many years um, until uh, actually till his death. One of the things I'm most proud of, and this was um, very inspirational, I love collaboration, as I said in my narrative. Um, this was through the Rockford Public Library, the R2K Committee, the Friends of the Rockford Public Library, the Rockford Community Foundation, and the Rockford Area Arts Council. And I was the creative editor for this. Um, and what we did was really a work of magnitude. Uh, the committee 
and they were really hard workers, and there are too many people to even try to name, would um, find out about the historical writers, you know, who has written here in the past, but who is writing now, and if they had a significant body of work published, then they were in here. And, what, and the way we designed it was, um, for example, you'd have your picture in if you were a, a publishing writer, and a little bio of you, and then um, an excerpt from your pieces. And then the other thing that happened is uh, there's photography of the Rock, Rock River through, throughout this, like this kind of thing. And it's, a, I think, a, a quite a lovely um, coffee table book. So that was kind of an inspirational Rockford moment for me. I, what I find about Rockford is that if you seek the community that you're looking for, you can find it. Um, and you can find collaborations and you can, you know, get involved in organizations that uplift the community through literature. And so I think I put on my narrative that I've been doing that for about 50 years in some form or other. I loved working with Dorothy and Elaine on this. I was on the editorial board for all of those years and also gave many workshops for, the, for women there. But this is what the magazine looked like. And here's the really cool thing. This was open to people for anywhere. Mostly it was Illinois people that knew about it at the time because most of this took place before Facebook and that kind of thing. So you had to put ads in magazines to get people to you know, do this. But I still see in magazines that I've been published in, people naming Coronet as one of the places they're proud to be in. Uh, and, and we did, I think, a really kind of stunning job with it. Dorothy's artwork was on the front, and I love that. I love collaborations among artists, and we've done a number of those at a woman, woman Space. And then the, the last one we did there, which is just, this was in the era where you could go viral, and it went viral. It was like the greatest culmination because uh, a woman's space had put together um, Oh, it was a, on the red tent, and it, and it was the red tent event. And so people studied the red tent, and there were discussion groups and different kinds of things going on. But then we decided to put together a, a book. And it went on Facebook, and then it went viral. And we got all over the world people. We had like a 1,000 submissions. And it was very, very exciting, very difficult. I was also on the editorial board for that. And um, the culminating event was at the pavilion at Woman Space outdoors and we thought you know a few people from around the Midwest would come they came from all over we had people from Arizona we had people from the East Coast I'm not sure but I think we might have even had somebody from England people the women were so ready to share their stories and have this experience and it was really a great way to do it so I get really excited about that kind of thing what I find with poetry is I can write for a long time and then I burn out. And that's a really good time to send the work out because then the secretary mind can kick in, you know, and kind of look at, okay, who's accepting what kind of thing? Where do I want to be published? And so my goal, I, I, my goal was to be published in every state in the United States or to give a reading in every state in the United States. That was my big Mag magnitude, and that was what I wanted. And so I worked at that for a couple of decades, actually, and came pretty close. So I give readings all over the country, and it's really exciting. It sort of morphed into that. And um, I don't think I go more than a couple months without having something accepted or published. And I, f I find that very exciting. Now, I've had people in my mentoring groups and my um, salons that I, that I hold in my house um, say, well, you know, why are you so publishing oriented? And I, and I said, well, you know, Emily Dickinson put all of her poems in shoeboxes and she never got to enjoy the fruit of that, really. And, and finally, women can do this. So why wouldn't you? The worst thing that can happen, really, is you get rejected. And I don't get bothered by that. I know a lot of people do, but I don't. It's like, well, I'll try this place three times. If they don't like me by the third time, I move on. You know, I don't take it personally. It's just, there's so many different kinds of poetry out there. It's burst, burst forth, you know, in the last 20 years or so that you can't get your feelings hurt over things like that. I do not know when I sit down to write a poem where it's going to go. I think it was Robert Frost that said, no discovery for the writer, no discovery for the reader.
And so for me, it's always an adventure of discovery. I, I really don't know where it's going to go. I have an idea, you know, like the idea that National Poetry Month and COVID are converging. But I have no idea what's going to come out of that until I start. And then all of a sudden, I don't know where it comes from. It starts. And some of them, some of the poems just naturally fall into free verse. The two that I read for you were free verse. But every now and then I'll have a poem that's kind of stuck. And I think, well, if I turned this into a sonnet, or if I used um, three line stanzas, or if I sculpted it in some way on the page, would it change with that process, because this is about what my process is, um, would that change the effect of the poem? And it does, in invariably, it does. So I don't like sit down at the typewriter and, or the uh, word file and think, oh, I'm gonna write a sonnet. I write something and then I think, you know, I think this would be more interesting as a sonnet. But I think everything that I've been doing for so long, it's not just been about me, it's always been about other people and sharing the gifts and, you know, writing music with other people or showing up for Earth Day or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I think I have a long involved history that actually involves the skill set, except for except for the technology, um, but everything else, the skill set that I think would make, um, how can I put this, an uplifting and maybe even charming poet laureate. In her poetry, Christine Swanberg captures the beauty of simple things. She celebrates the natural world and embraces the experience of being human. Christine is an experienced poet and an accomplished artist in the literary world. She is the recipient of accolades, awards, and scholarships across the United States, with over 500 original works published in, in nationally recognized journals, and several books published by independent Chicago-based presses. Christine has a rich background of community engagement, both within Rockford and throughout the state of Illinois, as a poet, editor, educator, and columnist for over 50 years. She has mentored young and emerging writers and fostered local publications and literary events. Christine wishes to be selected as the first City of Rockford Poet Laureate so that she may explore the theme of uplifting Rockford through poetry. Through this theme, she envisions celebrating the natural beauty of our area, elevating the diverse community to which we live in, and bringing inspiration to the community during the stressful time of COVID-19. It is my distinct honor on these merits, along with so many others, that I, Thomas McNamara, the mayor of the city of Rockford, name Christine Swanberg as an inaugural City of Rockford Poet Laureate. another award for you. Should I move this, or is this, okay. Okay, like this? All right. Oh, I'm completely flabbergasted and really surprised. Um, I wanna thank the committee. I know how hard this decision was. Uh, I'm affirmed that you looked at the decades of serving the Rockford community in making your decision. I want to thank Laura Frazier for nominating me and others who offered to 
and my husband who is recuperating and, and uh, doing okay, and he's been behind me on this whole poetic journal, uh, journey. Let me begin by congratulating the other excellent candidates. Please know that since I'm 71 years old and have persevered with this quirky literary teaching life seriously for 50 years, it is likely that because you are younger, you are poet laureates in, in, in waiting. Your time will come and rest assured you will be called upon to shine during my tenure. When I think about accepting this award, a quote from scripture keeps popping into my mind. Well done, good and faithful servant. To receive this after all these years, from a time of being very public and celebrated to a time of quiet mentoring and letting others shine, um, I feel I've been faithful to the muse and to my community. The word laurel means crown, and this feels like a crowning culmination of a life serving others and the world of poetry. The timing on this award is good as well. Like many of you, the last several months have been a time of personal challenges, sorrows, anxieties like none I have ever experienced. To have something else to concentrate on and to bask in the warmth of recognition is a soothing balm. So thank you. I thought about how did this happen, and so I wrote kind of a little narrative poem. I don't tend to write about my childhood much for some reason, but, but this one kind of says it. It's called Accidental Loyalty for Rockford. I did not mean to call you home forever, though I love the canopy of elms that once lined East State Street, the safe streets and neighborhoods where Regular kids like me could ride their bikes and visit friends, walk a mile to school even in winter with neighborhood friends, or go back to South Rockford to Italian Sundays and on South Central Avenue, which is where my parents came from. Have a lick of chocolate ice cream at Joe's Dairyette. Eat polenta before it became trendy. I did not mean to call you home forever, Rockford. Though I loved my English teachers who taught me well and saw the writer in me, though I was the first literary uh, editor at Guilford, shocking my teachers with a black and white hand entwined on the cover of our first magazine. I did not mean to call you home forever, but I returned to teach in a time of busing and tumult at East High, finding a niche as the creative writing teacher for years and years kindling and recognizing budding writers and nurturing them while my own burning desire to write glowed brighter and hotter within. It could no longer be denied. Like all adventures, it has had its twists and turns. But Rockford, and I noticed that the Youth Poet Laureate said this too, um, gave me my first places to publish. Readings, awards, recognition from the Rockford Review, the Rock River Times, Rockford Writers Theater, Woman's Space, Rockford Public Library, Midway Village, Natural Land Institute, Emerson House, Mendelssohn Club, Northwest Quarterly, YWCA Leader Luncheon, and Christ United Methodist Church. I have been blessed with support. So thank you, Rockford. Even though I did not mean to call you home forever, I thank you for your beauty of your parks, murals, forest preserves, river walks, and enchanted gardens and prairies. I thank you for these opportunities to shine and grow older, gardening and writing and mentoring. And now I thank you for this laurel wreath, an unexpected dream come true. And I say I am glad for this accidental loyalty, glad to serve you again as poet laureate and hold the words, well done, good and faithful servant, in my heart. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> okay, I better put this mask on now, right? We got the mask. Thank you so much. Oh, on top? Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Congratulations.
Thank you for joining us tonight. This has been a powerful evening in the arts. Art is powerful. Poetry is powerful, as we've seen. Congratulations to our new City of Rockford Poet Laureate, Christine Swamberg, and our new City of Rockford Youth Poet Laureate, Jocelyn Kuntz. We are thrilled to have been on this journey with you. Uh, the City of Rockford, the Rockford Public Library, and the Rockford Area Arts Council congratulates you both and the entire group of people that applied for this honorable position. So thank you for sharing your time tonight. Thank you for sharing your poetry with us. And we hope to see you soon. This is just the beginning of the conversation that includes poetry. Thank you.